It's Love on the Spectrum is back on Channel 9 and you can ABC, watch it ABC. Oh, on ABC. And of course, you can watch it uh, on free demand as well. And of course, we've got two of the biggest stars, Cassandra and Michael. Hello. 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 Guys, thank you so much for sparing the time to, to come in. I want to start by saying the show is back on and it is a super um, big hit. Michael, I'll start with you. How do you go walking down the street now, mate? You are a star. Um, sometimes I get recognized and sometimes I simply don't, but whenever people stop and recognize me, it doesn't bother me really. Cause it's, for me, it's flattering. Mm. Um, Michael, you have three goals in your <clears throat> life. Can you tell us what those goals are? One of them is to, is to find a wife and another one is to become wealthy and another is to become a voice actor. Voice oh, actor. we'll get into that. You you do have a beautiful voice, I must say. People like my voice Thanks. as well because it's a bit deep like yours, but I think yours is better than mine, that's for sure. Um, Cassandra, you're obviously new to the show this year. How's your <coughs> experience been now that it's finally on TV? Has your life changed at all? Um, it hasn't changed, not really, but um, all my students keep being like, really excited and sending me pictures of me on their televisions. <laughs> so that's been the, the cutest thing. A cool example. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I did get to go on Triple J radio as well. Nice. That was really fun. So for you, Cassandra, um, one of the things that um, you struggle with with autism from watching uh, season two is being that people don't see. It's, it, it's an invisible disability, if you'd like. Um, do you think that this TV show is helping open up people's perceptions and ideas of autism absolutely um i got a few messages on my instagram from other high functioning female autistics saying that they were really happy that they were being represented um we are the minority we are the less diagnosed gender um so i really think it's good that the whole world is seeing that it's not just um boys who can have it, but also girls, and that it comes in such a massive, like, variety of, um, it's as unique as a fingerprint. And Michael, for people that don't know what autism is, because we have a lot of people who are able-bodied, who listen to this podcast, who don't know much about disability, they want to learn. What, can you explain what autism is? Autism is a, um, it's a neurological disability. It, um, <coughs> It affects people with autism with their, you know, their social skills and their learning and developing skills, but they just learn things a different way. So, so for you um, both, uh, love has been something that has been a big difficulty with having autism. Um, when did you discover that your love lives were going to be different? I'll start with you, Cassandra. Um. Definitely in high school, um, I was always told by like my psychologist and the adults in my life that I was mentally quite um, educated, but very immature for my physical age. And I didn't get into the kind of wanting to date things until much later than my peers. Wow. Um, what, what about you, Michael? How did... How did you go growing up with, with your, with your disability? Well, firstly, I actually have Asperger's. It's actually a molder form of autism. Oh, cool. Okay. I didn't know that. Well, now you do. Yeah, I do. So it's a, for people that don't know, it's a, it's a spectrum, isn't it? So there's different varies yeah. of, of, of levels of, of how you're affected by autism or Asperger's or, or, or whatever exactly. it is. Um, yeah. What, what about you growing up in, in, in school and things like that? How did, how did you go? Um, in high school, I, um, most of the time I felt ignored and overlooked, almost like a ghost. I didn't have one set group of friends. I was just basically floating from one group to the next. How did that make you feel? Um, <clears throat> let's put it this way. I disliked it a lot. And... I felt the same way as you guys. Cause I, 
you know, I'm in a wheelchair. I don't know if you guys know that. Obviously we're not, <laughs> we're doing this on zoom. So we're not hanging out. Hang on. I'll show you. Can you see my chair? There it is. It's poking its little over this way. You can't really see. Um, and it was something that I, I tell you what I struggled with the most. I'll be honest with you both. I never saw anybody like me ever on TV. You know what I mean? I never saw anybody like me on the radio. I never saw anybody like me as a voice actor. I never saw anybody like me down the street. I'm seeing people with disability on TV now. And guess who it is? It's you guys. It's both of you. How does that make you feel when you know that, that you're having such a big um, impact on people? Michael, I'll start with you. Um, these days I feel I no longer feel invisible. I feel like that people are wanting to pay attention to me. And it, um, <coughs> sorry, um, but it just makes me feel great. Um, how do you feel about, you know, the same question Dylan asked? Um, I feel really quite blessed that um, if you think back to, say, 20 years ago, back when we were all children, I don't think any of us would have heard about autism or Asperger's um, and getting any help back then was extremely difficult. Nowadays, because we're creating such an awareness, it's helping the next generation. I feel really blessed to be part of it because they won't have to deal with some of the struggles I had to. Um, hopefully one day it'll just be like maybe like a scan machine or something that goes, okay, you're going to need this help, this help, this help, and you move on with your life and that's it, rather than it being such a drastic change in your life. Mm. Can, for you guys in the dating world, which is obviously what this TV show is about, how were you approached um, by the production company that they knew that you were struggling um, to find the loves of your life? How did it come to be that you two in particular were on this television show? Okay. Um, well, um, <clears throat> two years ago, back in 2019, when Northern Pictures was looking for any potential candidates on the spectrum, they, I think they contacted various employment agencies. I'm with one of them in Wollongong, at Work Australia. Great. They used to be called Essential Personnel. I, I've been with them for many years now. Um, Northern Pictures contacted at Work Australia and asked for any potential candidates, and they recommended me it was a good choice i must say mm -hmm. cassandra did you watch season one and then apply to go on the show or did someone find you so um back in 2019 they kind of did also like a social media release <coughs> like would you like to be on the show <coughs> and my mom found it and put my name down mm -hmm. and of course i didn't get into season one um but when they were coming up with season two they called us and we're like are you still interested so yeah did you, uh, one of the kind of the topics around, uh, your storyline in the TV show, Cassandra is, uh, you, your struggle with being what, you know, some people might call aesthetically beautiful. And of course you are, um, but struggling with the idea that people don't see your autism. And so you're struggling with this complexity of, you know, um, the physical, uh, and your disability. Can you take us through a little bit of your difficulty with that? Um, so my entire life, um, it's been rather difficult to make friends, um, keep coworkers, that kind of thing. Unless I was ex like extremely verbal about exactly what's happening. Like I have to pretty much introduce myself as autistic. Otherwise people kind of completely misinterpret who I am. Um, my friends from high school were with me as I grew up and was going through social training, they've seen the biggest change. And from back then to now, I still have to kind of explain things over the, like over too much. Like um, I tell people I talk way too much. If I talk too much, just tell me to stop. That's not rude to me. Um, also, if I go extremely quiet, it's got nothing to do with like my mood. It's just, I might be having, um, like a sight overwhelmness of 
the social situation that I'm in. Um, so I have to explain situations like that before they happen um, because people look at me and they go, ah, oh, she's pretty, she's normal. And it's like, no, mm. the wiring up there is a little bit different. <laughs> Well, that's the hard thing about non-physical disabilities. You know, I'm in a wheelchair. It's pretty obvious that I'm in a wheelchair. It, it, people aren't mistaken. And I can see why that's a problem. Um, Michael, I got to ask my man, you got to give me some tips. You look, you have skills when it comes to dating. What do you think is like some advice to be the perfect male, uh, on a, on a date? Well, firstly, do, do romantic gentlemanly gestures, you know, pull out the chair for the for your date, give her flowers. Chocolates is optional. Um, <laughs> they might um, be on a diet. <coughs> hmm? They might be on a diet if they, for the chocolates. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Depends on the person. And anyway, um, open the open the door of the of the place for her, and offer to pay for her. Uh, Michael, where did this chivalrousness, uh, chivalry come from? Um, where did where did you want to? What did you learn to, you know, be a gentleman. open a door, yeah. be a gentleman? But also, you know, as people can see, you you know, you bring a gift of a corsage and want to go ballroom dancing with your partner on a date. So, um, where did you learn these, you know, dating techniques? Well, there was only one person that ever taught me to be a gentleman, and that's my dad. My dad is the most important man in my life. And he's he's passed a lot of his wisdom on to me for many years. Mm. And um I've always been drawn to to ballroom dancing because it's traditional, it's old fashioned. Because like my dad, I'm old fashioned as well. We call ourselves old souls, mm. which is why I often say you can't teach an old soul new tricks. <coughs> And I got to say about your your parents, Michael. Your mum is a bit of a superstar in this series as well, isn't she? Are she you, is. Yeah. Are you proud of her? Mm. Yeah, I am. Why are you proud of her? Because I'm great, really grateful to have her as a mother. Wouldn't want anybody else for a mother. She's pretty. I can tell on her face when you go on a date. She's she's pretty happy. When you get home from your dates, tell me how she acts. What does she do? She acts. With excitement, she asked me questions about how it went and all that. Okay, and do you, are you honest with your mum? Because sometimes <laughs> I would come back from a date, and let's say I'd kissed the girl on the date, I still wouldn't tell my mum that. Would you uh, feel open to telling your mum all the details? Yes, I would be honest with with her, but I would also, um, if I was to kiss the girl on on a first date, I would tell her that with hesitation. Mm. Um, but you did have a conversation with your family around the dinner table about you have a, a, a younger brother and you were saying that Quetus is something that he might be more interested than you. Um, would you have those conversations with your parents? What's Quetus? Um, the ex making love. I see. Um, I don't even... No, if I'd have that kind of conversation okay. with someone. So you've yeah. got, you draw the line. I'm not talking about having <laughs> sexy times with my mum. No, oh, I'm asking. Well, Michael's very honest with his mum. He's got an interesting relationship. I was just curious. What about yeah. you, Gus? Do you? I wouldn't have that conversation <laughs> with my mum. No. <laughs> Cassandra, for you, now that you're, you know, on the television, you're in this space, are you finding that you're learning more about love? Um, I've still kind of struggle with it obviously um but i find that a lot of my friends have been able to like message me since the episode aired and kind of give me their own critique hmm. um one friend she's adorable uh, was saying that she was so emotionally worried for me when i was having a panic attack because she'd only ever seen me as this like suave very cool person hmm. and i'm just sitting here going who have you met? That's not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's helped because people have been giving me feedback now. Okay, what do you, I'll ask you first, Cassandra, what do you say to people that say people on the spectrum have to date people on the spectrum? <laughs> That's like saying people with blue eyes have to date people with blue eyes. That's just ridiculous. Um, we've had segregation in the past and that just did not work. 
at all. Like, there were so many problems. So, really, like, if I wasn't to tell people that I'm different, they wouldn't apply that to me. So, the fact that I am different, it's ridiculous that they would even try. For people who maybe haven't watched the television show, because they might be listening to this in the well into the future, a year, two years, ten years from now, of course, you can go back and watch it on iView. Um, and Netflix, yeah? Are you guys on Netflix? Not yet, but when the season finishes. Oh, oh but season that. one was on there. Michael, I saw your face on Netflix everywhere. Really? Yes. Yeah. You're a superstar global. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> would you guys, if, if, and I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but would you guys be open to dating somebody who is a fan of the show? Uh, we'll start with you, Michael. I'm, I would be open to it. But um, <clears throat> but if this person was some kind of obsessed fan, that's a, a big warning signal. <laughs> what does an obsessed fan look like, Michael? An obsessed fan would go to extreme lengths about something. You know, constant messages, letters, gif, unwanted gifs and stalking, mm. things okay. like that. I mean, I'll take gifs. If anyone's listening and wants to send me some gifs, <laughs> I'll take them. Um, and plus, I'm not really into material gifts that much. Okay. What kind of gifts do you love? Um, it's a bit hard to tell. Mm. Shows of affection, maybe. Things people yeah. doing stuff for you. <laughs> um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want people to do stuff for me. I would um, just you know, spend some time with that person, get to know them. And just have a, a general conversation about things. Cassandra, for you, let's say somebody comes into your Instagram DMs, <laughs> they're, you know, because of the TV show, they're, you know, a bit more aware of autism and, and, and some of the social, you know, barriers that you're working through. Um, would you be open to dating somebody like that? Um, I would be open to talking to them, okay. like talking to them, of course. But I find dating somebody I don't know at least a little bit to be very intimidating. Mm. Um, so I'd want to at least like create a friendship before I'd try to date anyone. Um, and of course they have to pass the mum test. Oh, jeez. Yep. It's a big test. Yeah, one. that is a big test. Have you, how did um, your dates go, Michael, when they met your mum in the past? Um, prior to Love on the Spectrum, I didn't have any Dates. True. Mm -hmm. But um only um only one met my parents. Okay. Was your mum was your mum warm and welcoming or was she a bit nervous and protective? How about we just wait wait and find out on oh, the other episodes of this good, that's that's a show. very good that's point. Michael. Very good, Michael. I like Didn't it. Didn't want to give away too much. I, I was I was trying my best to get a little bit of detail out of you. <laughs> but you're a, you guys are seasoned professionals That's now, right. so it didn't work. Very good. Uh, yeah. What about with um with discovering who you guys are? Um, you know, we all learn as we go, and age, of course, helps define us and wisdom, etc. But have you found that it's been fast tracked a little bit by being on this show and having different experiences than you would? Have you found, Cassandra? I'll start with you. That you're developing differently within yourself and finding a new person that you like or love? Um, so ever since my diagnosis back in grade seven, long time ago now, mm. um, I actually would meet up with my psychologist every six to eight weeks and have social training. So I have a very in-depth awareness of who I am from years of pretty much self-critiquing. But it is eye-opening to see how different I am from an outside point of view. Mm. Watching myself on the TV screen was the weirdest thing I've done yet. Mm. Um, and I didn't realize I nod so much. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I nod all the time. It's like, why do I do that? <laughs> so the show has opened my eyes to a few things, yeah. What about for you, Michael? Have you learned something new about yourself since being on Love on the Spectrum? Um... It's it's a bit of a hard question for hard question to answer 
actually. Mm. What What have you learned? What have you learned about TV, about yourself, about anything? What's been the best experiences? On the, on the series? Yeah, on the series, being on TV. Well, one of the biggest highlights was being Dawn Wells. Okay, can you explain who Dawn Wells is? For those who don't know, Dawn Wells was an actress on Gilligan's Island, oh. which has been one of my longtime favourites. I know Dawn Wells. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yep. Rest, God rest her soul. Mm -hmm. She did pass. Yep. And, and the um, virus of all things. Yeah, coronavirus. Um, so obviously that, that was an opportunity that you had because of the television <clears throat> show. Is that what you're saying? Well, um, one of, on one day I went on, it was at the supernova, which is a comic convention. Mm -hmm. I looked, I looked into it and found that Dawn Wells was going to be there. So that cemented my decision that I needed to go. Mm -hmm. I do remember that particular episode where you, um, you know, you went with your prospective partner to that and it didn't work out for you in that relationship, but, um, great that there was some sort of, you know, good news coming out of that, a photo with Dawn. You, yeah. And you guys love cosplay as well and costumes and comics and things like that. Yeah, share that in common. Can we, can we, can we come with you next time? <laughs> Where's our invite? You have to buy your own ticket. Of oh, course. okay. Well, of course. Um, Obviously. In, you guys are in Melbourne, right? We are. Oh, we can travel though. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure the next one in Melbourne is this weekend. Oh, but you're not going to The next one in Sydney is near the end of next month. Who are you, who are you dressing up as? Um, I have an Elsa outfit nice. that I made myself. Um, and possibly I'm going to bring back one of my older ones as well. Nice. What about you, Michael? Are you going as well? To what? Supernova. Su Supernova. I didn't know that was still going on. And it also depends on who's going to be there. True. Mm. What if, what if we were there? Would you come to see us? I guess I could. <laughs> <laughs> I like, like that. that. Very good. Uh, Michael, uh, speaking of, you know, being a bit <laughs> existential, a bit, uh, you know, very, you know, showing off sides of your personality. You did reference at the start about voice acting. Can you kind of tell us the work that you want to get into? Well, um, vo voices, you know, voiceovers, mm -hmm. and also possibly te television acting as oh, well. Okay. Well, on the voice stuff, um, you know, we, I did watch, you know, the episode and this this season of Love on the Spectrum. You did a Scooby Doo impersonation. Yeah, I how, did. How was that watching that back? It was a little bit cringe worthy. Okay. Did you feel like your performance wasn't that great or was it the wrong place to maybe show off that skill? Um, it's because the only person who can, do, who can do it better than me is Don Messick. God rest his soul. <laughs> the yeah. original. The original. So you're the yep. second best in the world, you reckon? I wouldn't say second best. Um, well, you said it. You did. <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly second best. I'm more like a... <coughs> Probably, um, I, I can't think of the top word. 10, top 10 at least. Top I would 10. say, yeah, it's pretty good. Can you give us maybe give us a demo? What kind of so you want to do like voiceover, like in ads, or like acting as like characters? Anima animation, animation, animation. So, uh, if I said, like, you know, if you were to voice the listen able podcast intro, that wouldn't really be what you'd be interested in, it'd be more like anime and stuff like that. Actually, um, any kind of voice voice acting would I'm happy with, whether it's that in animation or podcasts or commercials or even as a narrator all or right. a documentary. This or is something. your trial. Here's right. the audition. <clears throat> we want. I want you to say, "Welcome to Listen Able with Dylan or with Dylan and Angus." Here's your next episode. Give us that right now. Um. Sorry. Um. How do you? What was the words again? So welcome to Listen Able with Dylan and Angus. Welcome to Listen Able with Dylan and Angus. Oh, and here's he... the next episode. Oh, oh, sorry, I cut you off. Can you say that here's the next episode bit again? Here's the next episode. He's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hang on. We've got to ask our producer, Beth, who's yeah. outside. Beth, have we got any budget? To, to... We, might, we might have to get a how budget for you, Michael. Michael, how much are you charging? How much, how, how much do you cost? Uh, I don't know. Work it out with your agent. I don't even have an agent. What? You don't have an agent? 
You two yes, are. Yes, I know. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. You two are the most famous people in Australian <laughs> TV at the moment. We've got to get in you fact, some agents. If I, I, I know I need an agent. <laughs> Uh, what, about you, for, what, about, what about for you, Cassandra? Uh, are you looking to do some sort of work within the industry now that you've got, you know, a, an upcoming profile? Um, so I've been a dance teacher for the last 11 years, but I've also been trying to get into um, acting on TV, film and theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been able to get a few jobs here and there, but <coughs> auditions are always difficult. But um, I, I would be really happy to do acting or um, theatre that would be like the best for me. Can I ask you guys in the acting world how you feel when able-bodied actors portray autistic characters? Cassandra? It's what's the word? It's trial by trial basis. Um there are <clears throat> characters that people have portrayed that are not diagnosed as autistic, but we kind of emotionally connect to where there are some characters who are diagnosed autistic and the portrayal is just not quite there yeah so it really depends on the actor and how much they're willing to put of their personal time into researching and understanding us okay what about you michael do you think autistic people should play autistic characters or let actors be actors. I, I just say let them let them be actors because they don't necessarily have to be stuck to that kind of role. They can play any kind kind of role, mm. just yeah. so long as they just so long as they put in the the effort into giving an authentic performance. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I I, I I think autistic actors don't always have to play an autistic role. You know what I mean? I mean, no. if, if able-bodied actors could only play able-bodied yeah. roles, there'd be no roles for you guys in, exactly. you know, characters that you might be fantastic in. It's acting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for you, uh, on your disability autism, um, we had an incredible guest. Her name was Prue Stevenson in one of our earlier episodes, and she was able to kind of talk to us about um, what autism means to her. And I learned a lot about her story. Um, one thing, there's a few things, of course, that I took away from it, but one was that there are some sort of um, triggers for her of stuff that she can't have around her. And her example is Dyson hand dryers. So at airports, public bathrooms, she'll always check to see if there's a, because the sound itself yeah. is, is too much for her. Do you guys have individually um, something like that, um, that, that that is a trigger for your autistic self, Michael? Um, not necessarily, but there is one thing that, <coughs> sorry, um, there's one thing that, that, that makes me feel pretty scared. Spiders. Okay. Large, hairy spiders. Right. You know what? That has got nothing to do with your disability or mine, I think, because I hate that stuff too, my man. In fact, I can't even bring myself to look at a photo of Aragog from Harry Potter on Google because is that the big whatever, spider? That's the big spider. Oh, yeah. I hate that as it's, well. It scares me. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it gives me the. Ugh. I mean, Hagrid's the real person who should be at fault for that for raising that spider on the grounds. Um, <laughs> Cassandra, for you, is there something like a Dyson hand dryer or a big hairy spider that you know is hard for you to kind of work through? Um. So. I have tactile and audio um, triggers. Right. I cannot stand the texture of suede. Wow, it, that's a weird. I haven't heard that one before. The heebie-jeebies. I feel like I'm going to be sick. It's the worst. Wow. Um, which is actually funny because my neurotypical sister is the same, but with velvet. Okay. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and also sudden loud noises, um, like cars backfiring. Mm. Instant panic. Like I'll be hiding in a corner in seconds. <laughs> yeah. So can you take us through that emotion? What happens when you get that startled moment? What can, can you take us through the process? Um, I can try. Hmm. Um, this will probably make more sense to the older kids and generation. Hmm. The old TVs that used to have, like, you touch the screen, it would be staticky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imagine that all over your body, oh. but like 10 times worse. <laughs> it's, Sometimes it's quite painful, um, 
it's like every single nerve has just jumped to attention, but in a different direction. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, really quite difficult to explain. No, I think you did a great job, for yeah. sure. Now, we love dispelling, uh, you know, misconceptions about disability. That's what we do here at, at, at the Listenable podcast. I'll start with you, Michael. What do you say to people that say people who are neurodiverse or on the spectrum can't do things as good as uh, able-bodied people? I disagree with that. Why do you disagree? What would you say? Because literally anybody can do those things. For example, literally anybody can go to university, have kids, get a job, buy a place and get married. Literally anybody can do those things. That's such good advice. And you're so right. Mm-hmm. When, when do people, when people say that you can't, cause they do all the time <clears throat> happens to me as well with my disability. How do you feel? It, it makes me irritated. Yeah. It's because they don't, because, and that, you go. Sorry. Uh, it's because it's no fun missing out on things. It's true. And I think that's why the show is so powerful because, you know, even I'm as someone who's disabled, he's learning a lot about people on the spectrum because, you know, it's all the best way to learn is through lived experience. You know what I mean? So I don't have that yep. lived experience. So watching that with, 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 with you two is so awesome because I'm learning as well. Cass, what about you? When people say things like that, um, to you, my instant response is watch me. <laughs> Right. Challenge accepted. Um, but it's like saying that the guy who did a Bachelor of Engineering can never do a painting. It's, again, it's just this kind of stereotyping that some people have that if you have A, you can't do B, where so many people have proved otherwise. Like, I, yes, I can't talk to strangers very well but once I know you I'm an amazing friend I've been told just because you think I can't talk well doesn't mean I'm not gonna go out there and do a speech like yeah (laughs) makes sense can I can I do something with you both I I've got an article in front of me it's from men's health and it's the Uh. nine ways to pick up a girl I want to go through these nine ways with you and I want to find out what you think about their advice on how to get the fairer sex. Yeah. All right. So we'll get a female's perspective, of course, with you, Cassandra, and we'll get a male's perspective with, of course, you, Michael. Are we ready to go for this? Fair enough. Okay. Right. The first one is walk this way. Women first look at your attire, your attire is in what you're wearing. Clothes. And secondly, at how you walk. Michael, do you think about the way you walk and the way that you choose your clothes before a date? Yeah, I just think, I actually do think about the kind of clothes I prefer to, to wear for a date. Have you ever thought about the be, way you walk? Um, not really, because I think my my walking is is okay. Pretty good. What's your go-to favorite clothes to wear on a date? Formal attire. Yeah. Formal. You look good in a suit, you man. Do. You look good. Thank you. And Cassandra, for you, do you, is the first thing you look at, uh, um, what the man is wearing or what the female is wearing and, uh, and how they're walking? Um, definitely a well put together appearance helps. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are so many different aesthetics now that like grunge and punk that you can't really be like, you have to wear a particular style. Yeah. Um, and the way they walk, I don't know if it's the way they walk or the way they, like... Carry themselves? Swag. Yeah. Mm. Like, if you appear confident in what you're doing, people are going to be confident in you. Okay. And Dylan's answer is that walking is overrated. (laughs) Of course. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Walking? Who needs to walk? Am I right? (laughs) Got to get one of these. Dylan's wheeled off in his chair. Um, Next question is, look into her, her eyes. Uh, how do you both feel? Um, because some people with autism, you know, from what I've learned, can find eye contact um, quite confronting, scary, or difficult to do. Um, so it might be different for you. How do you guys feel about eye contact? We'll start with you, Michael. Um, I don't find con- eye contact scary or confronting. 
Um, I do find it a little bit difficult at times, but but above all, it's actually comforting as well. Cassandra, for you, what, what eye contact, the strong eye contact with a partner, is that important? Everything in moderation. Sure. So don't stare them down, of course. <laughs> but um, if she's looking at you, then yeah, look at her. Um, I guess a lot of people think like the eyes are the gateway to the soul or whatever. Mm. So, so I think us autistics people just see a bit too deep into the soul. So sometimes you just need to take a break. Mm. But um, yeah, everything in moderation. Also, if you don't feel comfortable looking at people in the eyes, who cares? You know what I mean? It's if people struggle with it, as some people do, disability or not, you know what I mean? It's not the be all and end all. So if it's something that you don't like doing, don't stress too much about it. Oh well, yeah, definitely. The next one is give and take a compliment. Do you find that you are always complimenting the ladies in your life, Michael, on a date? Yes. I often find myself doing that. What do you find complimentary about a woman? What you mean worth complimenting? Yeah. What do you look for? Well, it can be various things, whether what, what she's wearing, um, if she's wearing glasses and what her, what her eye and her eyes, her hair, the style, the color, and if she has nice, if her teeth look nice or even um, have, have wearing something nice on, on her lips. Mm. What's the best Whether compliment it's... you've ever given, Michael? <clears throat> Honestly, I actually don't really have a best compliment to give to a woman because anything about a woman is beautiful. Oh, oh. come on. Yeah. You, this is why stuff, mate. you are a stud, Great. right? This is why you are dominating. Lines like that, Michael. I, I love it. I Because this is my philosophy on women's beauty. There are many things in this world that highlight the fa- the hi- highlight the features of a woman's exterior, clothes, fashion, hair, makeup, jewelry, shoes, glasses, cosmetics, and her and her eyes and her lips. Those are the things that highlight the features of a woman's exterior. None of those things matter. If a man seeks true beauty in a woman, the only place he'll find it is in her heart because her heart possesses a true beauty. Good stuff. I mean, write that one down with your able-bodied or disabled. Hey, I, that is one of the great answers. I need a pen. I'm writing all this Fantastic. down. Right? I'm going but, home to my girlfriend uh, with these tips. But per, but for me personally, mm-hmm. I actually personally prefer older women. Older women? Why That's interesting. That? Why older women? <clears throat> it's because they're more mature. How old is too old? What's the What's the top age? She, she can only be older than me by at least four years maximum. Okay. okay. So, so my mum's single. She's 66 years old. That's maybe a little bit out of your age. I'm considerably younger than that. Okay. Well, just 40 just years younger. Now. So I mean, 40 years is not, is not on. Could be my stepdad, Michael. You no. could be Angus's dad. Uh, I don't see that happen. <laughs> okay. No worries. Sorry, Annie. Uh, and what about for you, Cassandra, on the same thing, um, when we talk about compliments, <coughs> do you find it hard to take a compliment or are you quite open to a, on a date, getting a compliment or giving um, it? If I think about two different events in my life, it's actually quite funny because yes, you've got to give and accept a compliment, but you've also got to accept that they, the other person might accept it. Um, I once was complimented and, you know, did the bashful, like, oh, no, you're too sweet, too kind. And they were like, how dare you, like, deny, like, my affection. Where another time I was like, yes, I am gorgeous. I am feeling this outfit. And they were like, wow, you are really vain. And I was like, what do you want? You can't (laughs) win. You can't win. Fair enough. Yeah. So, yes, compliments are good. Accepting a compliment is good. But also... Let the other person choose how they respond to it. Yeah. And be accepting and open of that. This one, this next one, I'm really excited to find out how you both feel because this is, I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with autism. This is dating in general for everyone. It says after a date, make sure you call within three days. 
Michael, how do you feel about the timeline of three days? And when do you think is a good time to call them back if you've had a good date? Or do you call them back if you haven't had a good date to say that you want to remain friends? Um, I would probably call her the night after. Okay. Okay. 24, 24 hours. hours. Yep. What if it's a bad date? Do you call them up and say, hey, I don't want to see you again? Or do you just, what they call ghost someone? I I wouldn't ghost the person. I would still call them the, the day after. Okay. Good answer. And for you, Cassandra, what about you? Three days? Is that too long? Any, what's your sort of timeline? I have a difficulty in keeping track of time. Hmm. Uh, yesterday is the same in my brain to three months ago, okay. three years ago. Right. When I say the other day, I could be talking about when I was 16. <laughs> so for me, time is not terribly important. It's more an indication of how excited you are. So if they're excited to talk to you and excited to keep interacting with you, whether they want to be friends or a continued date, it's like the sooner they message, it's kind of like, oh, they're still into me. And the longer it goes, the more you forget, mm -hmm. the more distance it gets. And the last one is? Two days for me. Two days for Dill. Okay. Gotta, gotta keep them, treat them, what do you say that saying? Treat them mean, keep them keen. There you go. How do you guys feel about that saying, Cassandra? Treat them mean, keep them keen. For both genders, for everyone. Um, it really depends on the person um, and how they respond to it. Um, of course, if somebody's like, oh yeah, he's being like hard to get, mm. he's cute, keep flirting, then it's working for you. But if the person is like, hmm, I don't think they're as interested in me and they try to like create distance, then yeah, I say that, maybe it's not the best. I say that, Michael, uh, I have a girlfriend now. I went on our first date. How long do you reckon it took me to text her after? Maybe 10 minutes. Um, two days. Nah, about 10 minutes. I was very keen. Oh, I didn't look at yeah. yeah I, I I tried to act cool, but I couldn't. I was like, mm. "That was the best date ever. It was so good to see you." I I couldn't hold mm. myself. And the last one yeah. from Men's Health. How do you guys take it if somebody was to ask you to come inside or for you to come inside for maybe sharing a coffee after a date in their own home or your home? Cassandra, how do you feel about that? Um. I have um, some history with trusting people that maybe I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so after the first date, probably wouldn't go inside for coffee. Um, but once you get to know them, like if you're already friends or maybe after the third date, then yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. Nice. And Michael? Um, I would ask, I would ask, the woman to come inside if she wants to have coffee, um, depending on how well the date goes. And if my heart is telling me to. Nice. If you want to keep it going. What I about if she that. thought that coffee meant a kiss and not a coffee? A coffee was what we call a euphemism. I'm not sure. Okay. We'll see what happens. Tough circumstance. No one drinks coffee at night. I'd be sus. Yeah. I think no. Someone if, at if night they're asking said... for a coffee at nine o'clock. <laughs> That's sus. They're probably looking for a kiss. No. Yeah. I'm not getting, See. I'm not getting mm. coffee. There's anymore. a little tip from us to you, Michael. Um, Thanks. Before we go, uh, I've got to ask. Now, uh, Cassandra, do you have a social media that you want publicly out there where people can follow you? Because we couldn't find you on the gram. Um, it's because I use the name Gluten-Free Jellyfish. There you go. Gluten-Free so, Jellyfish, if you want to follow Cassandra. What do you do? What kind of things are you posting? TikTok. Um, I now have a Twitter. They're all underneath that tag. Okay. We'll make sure we put that with our post so people can follow you. But this is something that I need to bring up because uh, we need to talk about your Instagram name, Michael. It's at Mr. Underscore A underscore plus underscore Michael. Have you graded yourself as an A plus person? Why did someone give that to you? Um, actually, my, my mother started calling me Mr. A plus when it came out. And I decided to use that as an alternate name. Okay. Mr. A plus, Michael. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Do you think you are A plus? Indeed, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and what about in dating? What are you in dating world? How are you? Give yourself a grade. Still still an A plus. <laughs> yes, that's my man. That's a silly, silly self confidence. Quest. 
is Silly important. Questions. Of I course, like Love on the Spectrum, if you're listening to this right now, uh, it's on ABC. You can watch it Tuesdays at 8.30. But if you're listening to this into the future and it's finished, <clears throat> it might be on Netflix now, but you can also watch it on ABC iView. We just got a couple more questions before we uh, before we finish. So we do this thing called a bo- at listen able. It's called a bowl of uncomfortable. It's where we are. People ask questions. They send them in, and uh, they ask for an honest answer about something that they wouldn't feel comfortable telling you. Okay, so we've got one that we're going to ask both of you. Uh, it is from a lady called Sandra. She has she's on the spectrum, and she says, "I hate this show." I don't think this show actually represents my life. Um, And I feel like maybe it's scripted. What do you say to that? Michael, I'll start with you. All I can say is each to their own. It's not going to be everyone's favorite show because you can't like everything. And for those who don't enjoy or, or like the show, that's their loss. Good point. Do you think it's a realistic um, a realistic version of what it's like to live on the spectrum, the show? I think it's a, uh, well, let's just say that I think that the show is trying to um, raise awareness for autism and also show people that that people on the spectrum are capable of feeling love just like everybody else and that they and that they want to find love as well. Because after all, who doesn't? And what about with you, Cassandra? I mean, obviously, um, they film you for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours at a time. Uh, and then they edit it down to a certain uh, moment. How do you feel that your autistic self is being portrayed on the show? Are you happy with the person that Cassandra is on the television? I'm definitely happy with how I was represented Um the film crew are always really accommodating. Um, the amount of times I embarrassed myself in front of them, it's <laughs> definitely not scripted. Um, but they're really understanding. And if you say, like, I'm not comfortable with that part being shown, they they take that into account. But I also think the show is not for autistic people. Like, we know what it's like to be us. It's more of an education for people who are neurotypical or of a different brain chemistry to understand us. Mm. So, of course, we're not going to be able to represent the entire spectrum. Um, There's thousands and thousands of diagnoses that come together in thousands of different combinations. No, we can't represent everyone. But it's enough to give, I guess, neurotypicals an idea, at least a glimpse into what it's like to be us. Great answer. As we let you guys go, I oh, say this with... Sorry, one more one more question before we can let you go. Hmm. I'll ask you both this as well. We have a lot of parents with autistic kids who listen to this podcast and they might not have come to terms with that yet. We also have people on the spectrum who listen who might not love themselves because they are different. What's your advice to those people that are listening? Michael, I'll start with you. Being different is is not necessarily a bad thing. It can be a, a good thing, actually, because as I was told, God loves uniqueness because we can't all be uniform because if we're all uniform, how is that even special? Mm-hmm. Don't Because there's no such thing as normal because I don't even know what normal means. And honestly, it's... If you're... Wanting to be normal and just normal, you're pretty much wasting your own time. What about for you, Cassandra? So, I'll keep going, Michael. Oh, sorry. So, I was going to also say that. So, so if you believe you're different, embrace it, accept it, but in your at your own pace. Great advice. You just be you, because everyone else is taken. Mm-hmm. Bill Buckley, you'll like that shout out. Cassandra, what's your thoughts? My favorite <coughs> thing to tell people is actually a statistic, which is funny. Um, one in 400 billion, that's the chance of you existing, for the universe coming together and making you. 
the fact that you are autistic or your child is autistic should have nothing against that type of miracle. Things had to happen in history and from the beginning of time to cul like culminate in you. Like, there can be nothing wrong with you because you are you are a miracle to exist, to breathe, to think, to learn, to know. And you cannot be weird or different without being unique. And you are one in 400 billion. Hmm. Like, that just astounds me. It's very true. Great words from both of you guys. And thank you so much for this episode. And and for um, telling us about yourselves beyond what we know from the television screen. It's been great learnings to get a bit deeper on Michael and Cassandra. And I say this with the most amount of love and intent. I truly hope to not see either of you on season three of... <laughs> Hopefully find that love. <laughs> love on the spectrum. We're hoping that it ends for you both. Uh, Michael and Cassandra, thanks for coming on Listen Able. Thank you. Thank I got you. one last. I got one last piece of advice for the audience. Oh, Hit please. us up. Yes, yes please. <clears throat> I know some people might have heard this before, but I think I should say it for the audience. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Oh, oh I like look that. At that. What a way to finish. And I was worried Oof. that I was going to be easily the least famous disabled person on this chat. And I am. Yeah, okay. It's true. You're both better than me. And Michael, can you send us an invoice? Because oh, yes. you are now our new voice actor intro guy. All right. Get get your agent. Who's what? your agent? Your he mom? He hasn't got one. Yeah, your mom. Who's doing I, it? I don't have one. You, you gotta you gotta get it, mate, because you're well, maybe you it. can take us out with thank you very much for listening to this episode of Listen Able. Okay. Thank you very much for, for your time for listening to this episode of Listen Able. That's it. Thank you guys. Thanks, Appreciate you it. legends. <laughs>